Whenever I talked about former White House advisors, Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump, I always ask the question, uh, what do they actually do there? And it's like that uh, movie Office Space. Like, what do you actually do here? What, what, what's your job? Well, I'm, a, well, I'm an advisor to the president uh, on, you know, uh, Middle Eastern policy or you know, women's issues. Okay, but what have you actually done? Like, what, what, what is your job? Well, uh, you know, it, it turns out I now have a, a definitive answer now that they are no longer in the White House. Um, it turns out that they made money for themselves. A lot of money. A, a whole heap of money. Uh, this is according to a new report from the Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. So that's a, that's a crew, the crew report. Uh, and it turns out that the couple made about 172 to 640 million dollars in outside income from their business interests during the four years as they served as an advisor. Uh, note how they said that, well, you know, you know, we're, we're unpaid advisors because you know, we, we, we don't really need the money. Um, <clears throat> so now the details of this, I mean, you, you notice how it's a really, really big range, right? So now it's reported and explained by crew as the income being reported itself in broad ranges and it had actually covered several months before they joined the white house according to the group so look they're trying to be accurate and saying look yeah of course they made a lot of money but i mean a big big chunk of that could have been before they you know got into office in the first place so before they actually had to or or you know had to like divest right uh and of course we're going to find out that they didn't also divest from a lot, even though there was some divestment. Um, still that, you know, even the lowest amount is absolutely mind-blowing. It works out to about, it, the lowest amount works out to about $43 million per year or $21.5 million each. Now, let me do a little comparison here. All right. So most White House advisors, the president, were paid $183,000 a year, no, $183,000 a year, it's not bad, um, but like $21.5 million a piece. So again, they made a big deal about, oh, well, we're, we're not taking a salary or anything. No, 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 no. Well, they didn't need a salary because it turns out that $183,000 to them, this is absolute chump change. Pennies, pennies, pocket lint. Like, fuck, what do I need that? That's like, you know, Somebody who's got, you know, thousands, thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and they find like a $5 bill on the sidewalk. Are they going to pocket it? Well, maybe if you're Ivanka Trump uh, or you're a member of the Trump family, you might. But most people are like, oh, it's just five bucks. Who cares? Uh, I'll go find somebody that, you know, to, to return it to, right? So it's, it's, again, literal pennies for them. Uh, now, the obvious question, of course, is where did that money come from? Well, the majority of Ivanka Trump's income, which is around $13 million, uh, came from her ownership in the stake, uh, I'm sorry, her ownership stake in the Trump Hotel, according to Crew. Uh, now, the group described the hotel as a, quote, the locus of influence peddling in the Trump administration. Mm. Yeah, I mean, well, think about it, right? If you're a business owner and, and you got you got some you got some onerous regulations you want to get rid of, right? You got some sort of issue that, that's keeping you from making... Uh, a ton more money and you want to get rid of it right you're going to want to do something about it uh, and so what if you could maybe you know get meetings with the presidential advisors or staffers or you know even himself by just staying at one of his hotels spending money in his business right going on his golf courses would you do it well of course a lot of businesses would why? Because there's profit on the line. There's money on the line. So that's one avenue that the that this couple uh, use their position to make lots of money. Another one was using their position inside the White House in order to get themselves special business dealings with other countries. For example, uh, Ivanka's attainment of foreign trademarks to use after leaving the White House. So it turns out you have uh, Russian, Chinese, and Japanese authorities renewing or approving trademarks for Ivanka's businesses while her father was in office. And some of the meetings, specifically the ones with China, she sat in personally. And that's just Ivanka, what, what about Jared? 
Well, Jared Kushner, meanwhile, saw his stake in real investment platform Cadre soar for being worth between five to $25 million at the beginning of Trump's administration to between 25 million to 50 million at the end. So that's like a near doubling. Wow. Wow. Uh, and this, of course, was according to Crew, citing the company's uh, apparent conflict of interest with the Trump administration's opportunity drone, uh, opportunity, opportunity zones program. Uh, quote, despite the fact that the top White House ethics official determined at one point that it was reasonably necessary for him to divest from Cadre in order to do his job at the White House, he never did. Well, because, of course, if you're a Trump or you're Trump adjacent, you can't divest if there's money to be made. Oh, no, no, of course not. And without a salary, of course, how would you expect them to survive to continue their absolutely lavish lifestyle? For somebody think of the poor Kushners. How are they ever going to live? How are they ever going to survive? How are they going to make it? Maybe they could get a real job like most Americans. Um, but, uh, okay, so, you know, you're still with me? Great. You might be asking, why is this important? Donald Trump's out of office. So is Jared and Ivanka. Uh, who cares, right? This is in the past. Go back to brunch, right? Well, it's because we need to prevent this from happening again, regardless of who's in office. Uh, and again, you know, I don't care if you're a Republican. I don't care if you're, care if you're a Democratic administration. This is clearly and deeply unethical. It, it is corruption, pure and simple. And yes, I think we should hold people accountable when they abuse the rules for their own personal benefit. I, for one, am tired uh, of, you know, some of these uh, common sense ways of, of preventing corruption while people are in office being only suggestions for people in power. Yes. The divestment, for example, it's only a suggestion. It's not a real law. There's a law saying, that, oh, you have to divest from your businesses if you're going to be in office. No, you can still have your businesses. It's just considered politically uncouth. Oh, how rude. You're actually uh, not divesting from your businesses and creating a conflict of interest. Uh, we're going to do absolutely nothing about it because we would do the same thing in your position. I mean, that... And in, in, in most people, when they hear about this, it's like, there's no way. There's no way, right? No, it's true. They don't, they're not required to divest. It's only a suggestion. Well, no, you ask me, I, I'm not asking. We're done asking you to divest because you cannot be a servant of the people while lining your own pockets with your own business interests. That's not how this is supposed to work. You're supposed to work for us. You're supposed to work for the American people. So what I'd like to see happen is obviously passing a law, forcing any po politician to divest from their personal businesses if they're going to be in government. Simple as that. Pass a law with strict penalties. I'm talking like removal from office if you're caught and jail time. All right. Uh, I'm done with this. I I'm done messing around with these uh, corrupt politicians. Now, of course, the reason that won't happen is because in the current Congress, well, it's filled with corrupt politicians. Unfortunately, many of them will not do that because they have conflicts of interest in business as well. And not only that, but many of them get, you know, massive amounts of political donations from these corporations, from these business interest lobbyists. Uh, and many of them, once they're done in office, they end up going to serve in businesses. And so that's, I mean, I mean that's the system that we're in. And it's, it's filled with the brim of the corruption. Uh, Nancy Pelosi, for example, gets health insurance money, uh, money from health insurance companies and big, big pharmaceutical companies, and she fights against Medicare for all. And then you have Ted Cruz that gets money from giant oil companies. And guess what? He continues to fight against anything to put a stop to climate change. This is an example that is 100% is bipartisan. You have politicians on both sides of the aisle that end up getting paid by the same people or you know corporations in, in general. And so this corruption is preventing people from actually having a, a government that, that tends to represent us. And they instead represent the large business interests, which in most cases don't have, at least when it comes to the you know economics uh, and, and, and class struggle and things like that, they don't have the same interests as us and end up being oppositional to us. Raising wages is a, is a great example. Uh, and so corporations, a lot of corporations are against raising the minimum wage, whereas most Americans are massively in favor uh, of that. And so, again, 
what we need to do is we need to push for these laws, but first, obviously, we need to get a lot, uh, we need to elect politicians who are not tainted with that money, and then when they're office, push them to get that money out. Obviously, it's going to take a long time to do it. Corruption this, this deep-seated and uh, deep-rooted into our system that invites it is going to be incredibly difficult to root out. So I guess we better start. We better start now so we can prevent the next Javanka from using our government that is supposed to be for us to serve themselves. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.